Hi there, this is Dr. Mark Weirman, and this is going to be a brief video about sliding filament theory. First, let's label a few things. This right here is going to be your motor neuron. This thing down here is going to be your myocyte. And we're going to have the cell membrane called the sarcolemma. So what happens is we do have an action potential that propagates on the axon to the axon terminal and then it's going to hop over to the sarcolemma. This action potential is going to propagate on the sarcolemma until it gets to a T-tubule. When it reaches a T-tubule, this action potential will travel down the T-tubule and it's going to activate the, uh, the release of calcium from the terminal cisternae. And this terminal cisternae is a part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So once this calcium is released, this calcium is going to head towards the sarcomere. And the sarcomere is the functional unit of a skeletal muscle. And so let's label some things about the sarcomere. We have the thin myofilaments called actin, and then we have the thick myo, uh, the yeah, the thick myofilaments called the myosin. And I do have a rope that's wrapped around the actin, and this rope is called or his structure is called tropomyosin. And on this rope. I do have another structure or a knot, and that knot is called the troponin. Okay, so when this calcium is released, this calcium is going to interact with this knot or this troponin, and you can think of it like the calcium is pulling the knot on the rope. And what happens is it's going to cause this tropomyosin to turn, and when the tropomyosin turns, it's going to expose the myosin binding sites. So at this point, the myosin heads will be able to walk or be able to interact with these uh, myosin binding sites to create cross bridges. And these cross bridges are going to allow contraction of the sarcomeres and basically bring the actin in and the actin is going to slide over the myosin. Now this is the, the kind of, I think, the hardest part is the next step here. How do these myosin's heads move the actin? You're definitely going to be using ATP. So if we have the myosin head attached to this myosin binding site, to detach it, we need to add ATP to the myosin head. Once we add ATP to the myosin head, the myosin head will detach. Well, this myosin head totally wants to reach and start moving towards the next myosin binding site. So to make that happen, we need to hydrolyze. We hydrolyze ATP and we make ADP and a phosphate. During that process, energy is released. This energy is going to allow this myosin head to move to the cocked position and reach over to that new myosin binding site. So at this point, ADP and phosphate are going to be lingering on this myosin head. To get it to create a cross bridge, what you're going to do is you're going to kick off the phosphate. So the phosphate gets kicked off. And you can imagine this myosin head is going to get into that myosin binding site. Then the next step is you're going to kick off the ADP. When the ADP gets kicked off, this myosin head will perform a power stroke and this actin is going to slide over the myosin. Then you just repeat that process. You add a new ATP, disconnect it, hydrolyze it into a new ADP and P, and you move the myosin head to the next uh, myosin binding site. You drop the P, you connect it, drop the ADP, you do another power stroke. Then you repeat it again. You add a new ATP, disconnect, hydrolyze it, get it to the new cubbyhole or the new myosin binding site, drop the P, it goes into the 
cubby hole or the minus binding site, you drop the ADP again and you power stroke. And you continue to do that. So that's a brief little uh, introduction to sliding filament theory. Hopefully this helps you uh, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye.